Hey everybody, this is yet another power supply video. In this video, I'm going to be, going to be comparing three power supplies total. I'll be comparing the Best Tech ATX 250 12V, the Best Tech ATX 250 12Z, and the Best Tech ATX 312V. Now, of course, the reason why I'm doing this is because many people are wondering about this power supply here, the 12V model, the 250 watt 12V model because it does have a defect in it that causes the 5 volt standby rail to go extremely high and kill motherboards. This is why so many e-machines have been known to fail after a few years of use. And of course, this power supply here, the 12Z model, is, a, is OEM for HP computers, HPs and compacts. These are much, much more reliable. And the ATX 312V is actually a more reliable version of this power supply. It doesn't have the faulty two transistor design 5 volt standby rail, which I'll show you there here shortly. Here are the specs for the Mastec ATX 2512Z power supply. Pause of use specs. Here are the specs for the Mastec ATX 2512E power supply. Pause view specs. Anyways, before I move on, I want to point out that this power supply is a much, much older design, has a minus 5 volt rail, and has less power on the 12 volt rail than the 25012Z model. Alright, now let me explain the actual problems with the best AKXTX 25012E power supply, why it has such a bad reputation. Like I mentioned earlier, the 5 volt standby rail in this power supply has a big defect. It uses an old 2 transistor design with no protections on it for over voltage. So what happens is the electrolytic capacitors in this circuit dry out over time and fail. And the regulation goes extremely out of spec. Normally, the 5 volt standby rail would be between about 4.95 to 5.1 to 5.2 tops but this power supply here has been known to put out over 12 volts on the 5 volt stand rail when you first plug in the unit I actually have a video on my channel of plugging in one of these and it's actually putting out over 12 volts on the 5 volt stand rail when I have my multimeter hooked up to it and of course that is very bad for your motherboard if you want to learn more about this power supply johnnyguru.com has a very funny review of this power supply. The title is Death of a Gutless Wonder 2 The Best of the Best Tech and I highly recommend you go check that out because he actually hooks this unit up to a load tester and initially other than the 5 volt standby rail this thing does pretty good in terms of output power but it goes down pretty quick. Anyways, um, like I was saying earlier the capacitors in this thing, in this thing fail and it's usually C1 and C50. If you wonder where C1 is at, it's right here. It actually blew off the board when the 5 volt standby rail overvolted. And of course, like I say, um, once those two critical capacitors go bad, it starts a chain reaction. The defrost resistor R102 and this diode over here, as you can see, all the diodes in this area get really hot and cause the other caps to fail and it's just it's just a chain reaction that includes your motherboard in the in the equation so um, it takes out your motherboard and it's funny to note that a person named uh, what goes by the name Evrel on bad caps in the forums has actually repaired these power supplies by including his own add-on board that uses an IC controlled 5 volt standby rail and it's pretty cool the next clue to showing that this is a um, two transistor design is if you look here on the primary heat sink there's a big switcher to the left and to the right there's a little bitty switching transistor and that is for the 5 volt standby rail you'll notice that, that this part here is missing from the 12Z model here in just a moment when I go look at it so anyways let's go ahead and pan out and have a look at both these power supplies Here's a better look at the 
250 12 v and you'll notice like I say all the burn marks on the board in this area and let's have a look at both of these this so you can see a better comparison you'll notice right away that the heat sinks on the 12 v 250 watt model are actually thinner than the 12 z the 12 z has better capacitors in some cases some 12, 12 z models have these kinds of capacitors in them now, let me go ahead and show you something about the 5 volt standby circuit on this unit. If you notice on the primary heat sink, we only have one component there that's the main switcher. Some power supplies will have two of these, but this one has just one. Notice there's no 5 volt standby transistor. It's IC controlled. Much, much better. That's what makes these more reliable power supplies going back out again and you'll notice other than that other than the heat sinks and the capacitors these are highly similar however this one here actually has an LED light on the back of the unit to tell you the status of the power supply when it's plugged in but the filtering components are nearly identical we have one X capacitor on the input we got this <clears throat> the AC line is actually wound around a ferrite core going into the power supply. We have the fuse, two coils. Look at the view right so you can actually see why I'm pointing at. Anyways, um, we got the two coils, two Y capacitors, and two X capacitors. On this one, it's pretty much the same. And of course, we got our NTC thermistor. A bridge rectifier. So, anyways, that's the big difference between the ATX2V12E and the ATX2V12Z. Oh, another thing to mention right away: the 12Z model has a better quality ATX12 connector, and the 25012Z and the 312E lack the white wire on the ATX connector because these two power supplies don't have a minus 5 volt rail because they're a newer design. Now let's open a ATX 312V and have a look at it. Okay, here's the spec label on the ATX 312V power supply. Pause the view specs. Okay, let's go ahead and pop this thing up and have a look inside. Okay, now I pulled the cover off the Bestec ATX 312V power supply and one thing I noticed right away is the case is completely different from the other two. The case on this power supply is a clamshell design. And here is the cover. You notice it has good ventilation. This power supply breathes pretty well. Not to mention this power supply has a more sensitive fan control circuit. This power supply here will actually up the fan speed a little faster. Than the other two, it doesn't wait. To, it doesn't wait till it's extremely hot for it'll speed up the fan, which I find a good thing. This power supply does not have a two transistor design, five volt standby rail. If you notice here, we've only got one main switcher on this primary heat sink. And this is a very, very important question that many people may have wondered on certain forums, and I've actually seen some misguidance on these power supplies. Some people on the internet would say that you should avoid the 12 E power supplies at all costs, at all means, because they are all bad. Well, only the 250 watt 12 E is a motherboard killer. This one here is not. This one here is actually built very well, I would say, compared to the 250 watt 12 E model. I mean, it's not as gut filled as the. HP version of the 300 watt unit, which I'll have a video on later on, but um, it's still, for the most part, it works very well. The capacitors are somewhat decent. I've never actually seen the capacitors found on the 312E model. The primary caps in this one are caps on 560 microfarad, while on the other two power supplies, the 250 watt units had 470s. And other than that, this power supply here is highly similar to the 
250-watt 12E model other than the 5-volt standby circuit. Here's a look at the 250-12E power supply on the left and the 312E on the right. As I was saying, they're highly similar. But of course, the 312E lacks the two transistor 5-volt standby rails. So like I'm saying, like I was saying before, if you got an e-machine with this power supply, you got nothing to worry about. My grandpa has an e-machine's computer that he bought in 2006, and I've done quite a few upgrades to it. Put a better CPU in it, upgraded the memory, that kind of stuff. Upgraded the operating system. It still has this power supply in it. It's been going for six years now of random use. Sometimes it run all the time, other times it get turned off at night. Never had a problem with this power supply. And of course, over here is the 25012Z power supply. Overall, I think the HP models are actually higher quality than the E-Machines model. But like I'm saying, the only one you got to worry about is the 25012E. The rest of them, they're fine to go. So anyways, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to ask.